In August of 1995, Microsoft introduced the Windows 95 operating system. Designed to be a game changer, easier to use than ever, Microsoft hoped it would introduce a lot more people to the world of Windows computing. But if you want the job, spend some time looking at Windows 95. What do you know about the system? Uh, well, I dabble with the uh, old Windows a little mm. bit. Hmm. And you? Oh, I, I'm, I'm still uh, mastering Pong. Hmm. And it was easy to use. I transitioned from Windows 3.1's interface to it with no issues. Once I'd realised that the start graphic was a button you could actually press. But since the era of Windows 3.1, some companies had thought that Microsoft's operating systems were neither easy or fun enough for new and young users. So they decided to create their own graphical user interfaces or shells that would sit on top of the operating system and could even boot when you started the machine up. One of these manufacturers was Packard Bell, with a shell called Navigator, which replaces the Windows desktop with a virtual home. So let's start it up and have a look at the interface itself and see if it really did have the increased ease of use and fun it claimed. To look at the software, I'm calling in the services of this very nice but desperately in need of a Retrobrite 233 MHz Packard Bell Pentium with MMX technology which was kindly donated to me by Neil Simpson some while ago. Welcome to Packard Bell. The Packard Bell computer offers two computing environments to choose from, a Navigator Home environment or Microsoft Windows. Press button 1 to go directly to Navigator, or button 2 to go to Windows 95. On startup, we are taken to the welcome screen. Yes, excuse the sound quality from those speakers, it sucks. Here, we can look at this overview of the program, a program that in itself is on the whole quite easy to use. So if you have to read all this, you know you are going to struggle to do anything much with a PC. From here, we can go into the living room. This is the central hub of activity, from whence in this virtual house, you could wander off to do other things. But first, let's make ourselves cosy and have a look around our living room. As we curiously drift our mouse, a little information box at the bottom left tells us about the option. It's not obvious at first what you can interact with here. Starting at the top left are the security options, but as I don't have the password, I can't change anything here. Next along is the preferences or environment settings and this gives you a few basic controls including allowing you to decide in which room the program starts and seemingly also shows you the password but this is not correct. Next along are buttons to allow you to control any running applications, one to drop back into Windows 95 and one to shut down or restart the computer. Once again wandering around the room our cursor comes upon the stairs. We are informed that this apparently leads to the workspace so Let's go up there. Once in the workspace, we can see an office-like environment with categorized drawers on the left, programs contained within drawers and access to the files from a categorized filing system on the right. In the hobbies drawers, we find this computer was installed with floor plan plus 3D. This is one for another video. In the games folder, we have the ubiquitous games that came with all Windows operating systems of the era Clicking on this down arrow shrinks the files onto the desk. You also have a direct link to the floppy drive and a timekeeper program, which lets you know how much of your life you've trained on each of your projects. Don't like the look of the environment? Want something more professional looking? Well, how about a 2D version, whose functionality is identical? I must say, I do like the look of this one. Oh, Microsoft money. I used to use this exact one came with my pack or bell at the time too. This brings back memories. Ooh. Right, need to hunt for how to get back out to the living room and here we are. Okay, next let's look at the info room. In here we find tutorials on electronic versions of the instruction manuals. Using your mouse tutorial looks interesting, showing that back then people had to learn what we now take for granted. But unfortunately, you need the CD which I don't have. Over here are the manuals, just simple hyperlinked text documents, no PDFs here. We will not hang around. Time to hunt for the way out of this room. A simple button 
would have been better. Okay, next over to the left, we have Kid Space. Guess what demographic this is aimed at? Hello, and welcome to Kid Space. This is the fun place to work and play. Keep your software in the bookcase. Put all your games and stuff on the shelves. The bottom drawer lets mom and dad organize the room. To start your software, drag things from the shelves to where I'm standing. Keep all your files and letters in the dresser drawers. Watch out for things flying around. Now, if you need more help, click on the dry bob with the mouse. Okay, so after we got rid of him, you can see that this space is aimed at the young child. With a fun looking playroom with various objects you can interact with, most of which I have no idea what they are doing or why they are doing it. Over on the right we have the drawers where the child can place their files. This lever changes the view outside the window, I think that's a nice touch. What I didn't find until later is that glasses show the feature of each object, something absent in other rooms. It appears as a lack of consistency, like with leaving each room in this program. Here is a drawer for putting some programs in and this one gives various options for the room. Luckily with this room, I found the way out pretty easy. Back in the living room we can now go into the MySpace and know before you say it it's not the defunct website. This is way before then. MySpace. This is the cool place to work and play. Keep your software in the bookcase. Put all your games and stuff on the shelves. To start your software, drag things from the shelves to where I'm standing. Keep all your files and letters in the dresser drawers. Now if you need more help, click on the striped box with the mouse. So what are you waiting for? Start exploring and have fun! As you can quickly see, this room has been themed for slightly older children. With the same basic functionality of categorised drawers to put files in and shelves to put programmes on of your choice. You have a menu that allows you to control other various aspects and a few items to interact with. I have no idea what this blind is about. Would be far better if it had some purpose, but hey. Time to hunt for the exit again. Ah, there it is this time. Back in the living room and over here you can gain access to what would have been for me at the time the best part of the whole program, which is an external program called the Audio Station, your one-stop Packard Bell shop for all things musical, with the great design of a stackable hi-fi. Oh, how I love this. Wish modern audio programs were like this. You can play Waves. Listen to MIDI files and of course play your CDs. Amazing at the time and heaven even today and I don't care what you think. So moving on to the table, if we click on the printer we get printer options. And if we click on this box it tells us to register using the registration card. This is before the internet after all. Last but not least, this bootcase contains all the main software applications on your system categorized for productivity, reference and culture, hobbies and oh there's that floor plan plus 3D again that's getting my geek juices running and yes exiting a program leaves your screen white for a worrying amount of time. Come on! You also have kids world, games and tools. Okay time to leave the software library just checking nothing hidden? Nope. Well, okay, that's your tour of the quirkiness of Paco Bell's navigator. A little bit of PC operating system history. It has its charms, presents some inconsistencies such as how to leave rooms, but I suppose you get used to that quickly. Would have been nice if you could customise the rooms more, but I suppose memory was more of a premium back then, and with this sitting on top of Windows, then opening the game, it may have presented a bit of a performance challenge. In the end, once the novelty had worn off, I suppose most people would have gone to Windows, which in the end became such a part of our culture from a young age that the software outlived its usefulness. Time to put it back into history. Well, if you've enjoyed the video, then please like it. You can join us on our Facebook and Twitter groups, and if you wish to support the channel, you can do through Patreon. It just remains for me to say thank you very much for watching. You need to put the
and dirty. You're a dirty boy. 